Hello and welcome to a tutorial on how I build the dry stone walls I use on my layout, Molesworth Vale. Initially I had looked at the commercial offerings but found that the plastic variety was very detailed but too rigid and the highly flexible foam based options were just not of high enough quality for the look I was after. With this in mind, I've come up with a solution that uses materials that we'll all probably have lying around, and that seems to really capture the feel that I wanted. So what do we need? Well, we'll use a pen, a sharp knife, a paintbrush and a steel ruler. In addition, I'm using some cheap grey spray paint that I bought online, some ballast, I opt for some 00 scale grey blend that seems to be the closest to the stone size and colour that I require, some PVA that will be diluted with water to a standard 50-50 ratio, a couple of drops of washing up liquid, just as you would for any ballast setting mix. And finally some cork. This is 3mm thick cork that was purchased from a major online retailer for just a couple of dollars, but many people will have something similar lying around if you're using cork for your track bed. Finally, I use a baking tray to contain the mess and make reusing that ballast easier. The first step is to cut the cork into strips, and I make these roughly 8mm wide. Once you add the ballast to them, they end up being around 5.5 scale feet high. Visually this is reduced slightly if, like me, you're using static grass. The result seems to be pretty much correct, but obviously you can experiment to find the ideal sizes for your layout. After this is done, I give them a base coat of grey paint. I built myself a little jig for this out of foam board with a few track pins pushed through. The cork strips are simply pressed gently onto the track pins and then I'm able to give them a thorough coating of the base colour prior to the next steps. Once the paint is dry, and I usually wait around 24 hours between each stage. I liberally apply a 50-50 mix of PVA and water along with a couple of drops of washing up liquid. Even though it's been primed with paint, you still need to work quite quickly as the glue will still soak into the cork. When each strip is ready, I cover them with ballast and set them aside to dry. The tray works great for containing the ballast and keeping everything tidy. I try to work with four 12 inch strips at a time but often have several sets in various stages of completion. It all really just depends on the quantities you require, which for me has already surpassed 50 feet. Once the glue is dried, I shake off any excess ballast and then repeat the process on the next side. Before working on the top edge, I take some time to remove any pieces of ballast that have become stuck to the bottom. Much of this will rub away quite easily using just your finger, but for more stubborn bits, I use the handles of a pair of tweezers. When the walling will stand upright on its own, 
you can proceed with filling in the ballast along the top edges. After some more drying time, we have four feet of walling almost ready to go. The last thing to do is to tidy up any small clumps of ballast that are formed where you don't want them. The walls will have lost some of their flexibility, but with patience and care, you can still slowly bend them to make some quite tight curves. And that's it! At this point all that is left to do is to place the walls in their positions on your model and add your ground cover. Once placed it's also quite simple to mask any joins by simply applying a little more glue and sprinkling the ballast where it is needed. You can then brush away any excess. Finally, here are a few pictures of the walls in place on my layout various stages of scenic detailing. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and happy modelling!